Hey beautiful people, today I'm very very excited to share with you the exciting Fujifilm X-H2, yep. What I have with me here is actually a record setting camera. This is breaking all the rules we knew about the crop sensor. We've been for a very long time thinking 24 megapixel, 26 megapixel. That is the ceiling for the crop sensor camera because almost all the other manufacturers have been keeping it at 24 at 26 even though we have seen cameras like your uh, your r7 coming at um i think it's 32 megapixel uh, but anyway let me not talk about that camera um so we actually for a long time thought crop sensors that's the limit I'm going to share with you the walk around this camera, what you can get out of this camera, both from the photo side and on the video side. Of course, I've taken this camera for a spin in a 30 degree Celsius heat of Pretoria. Humidity was about 48%. You'll understand how uncomfortable that would be. So, um, instead of starting with the walk around or the walk about or the look and feel of the camera let me start with exciting news which is a 40 megapixel camera that you get in here which means very very detailed photos when i talk about uh, the 40 megapixel let me talk a little bit about the sister camera to this which is the core flagship um, together with the X-H2, which is the X-H2S. The X-H2S is meant for speed, this is meant for resolution. The X-H2S has um, 26 megapixel, this is the 40 megapixel, and they do share some of the things. So I just wanted to make a clarity between the two, and one is for speed, one is for resolution, and they are both capable on videos. So let's still go on, and when we say this camera the other one is meant for speed this is meant for resolution it doesn't mean that this is a, 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 a couch potato it doesn't mean this camera is, is very slow despite the 40 megapixel um, you still get your 15 frames per second mechanical shutter you still get your 20 frames per second uh, e-shutter or the electronic shutter of which um, it will crop to about 1.29 so you're going to get a crop with your e shutter at that best of 20 frames per second um what i like is that this sensor is very new and instead of uh doing a stacked sensor which is on the x-h2s they kept this they kept it to a normal uh, back illuminated um, cmos sensor and they kept it as a x trans sensor which is something that made me like fujifilm actually um, that sensor is very very detailed and they don't even use the anti-aliasing uh, filter so you get all the details all the resolutions that you can get from the sensor so that is something that is very very nice um, of course the the, the stack um, sensor would have given a much faster readout which you get on the s but this is actually a welcome uh decision to keep it to the x trans sensor even though we know that the x trans sensor does need a lot of uh, juice battery but i love the x trans sense uh, the x trans uh, sensor so going forward we've talked about um the photo maybe few things that i can add on the photo side is that um they have added a digital zoom because you have 40 megapixels which is quite a lot you can zoom um 1.4 times up until to two times from the sensor so it is going to be like a digital um converter and so i'm going to move away from the photo side um or let me rather maybe mention this that from your xt4 there is no extra new simulation on this so the simulation that you are going to get are similar to the xt4 ones moving on to the video side on the video side this is extremely exciting especially to me because i'm more on the video side these days so from your 40 megapixel hello 8k of course you can shoot 8k 30p from this camera of which i'll be doing 25 and you'll be doing 25 if you are on the pal side um and not only can you shoot 8k but 
Fujifilm has included inside this camera ProRes 422. So not only can you do your ProRes 422, but you can do your light version, which is the LT, or your high quality version, which is the HQ ProRes. So if your workflow is um, ProRes, of which we all know that ProRes is not as compressed as our normal H.264, H.265, um, so it is not going to use a lot of your resources when you do post-processing. So you can do that internally. Something that is very, very, very exciting is that you can output the raw from this if you are owning the Atomos Ninja uh, or you are owning your black magic monitor you can output both raw from this camera using the hdmi so that means getting all the sensor information from this camera that you can bake later on your post processing software for me that's very very exciting in fact to be able to do that in this camera APS-C and the price range of which the price range is more than two times lower than your full frame r5 and three times um your nikon z9 so that's very exciting so this is this could be a camera that will be next to me all the time this actually aroused my love for fujifilm once again not that i hated it but there were few things that um, i had issues with it and i had to leave it so now that we have talked about those exciting things, let's just talk about the camera itself that has been redesigned from the ground up. You will see classic of the X-H. Um, it has a DSLR style grip that is on the X-H1, even though it does feel that it has been um, redesigned a bit. Then on the front here, there are a few things that have changed. Before talking about the front, the main thing that you will see will be on the top. Classic of the XH, um, the XT range and the XH1, you will get three uh, dials at the top, which is your aperture, your ISO and your compensation, your exposure compensation dials. They are all wiped off, they are gone. What we have here is one dial that has your manual, I think it's called the PSAM, I don't know how to pronounce that, which has your program, your shutter priority, your aperture priority, and your manual on the photo side. Then you have your seven, um, what do you call them, programs. So you can program all those um, seven spots, seven dials, whatever it's called. Uh, previously, they used to be embedded inside the menu, so now it's a turn of a dial and then you can get to whichever you have programmed for the day or that you normally use more often. Then you have your filter, which is more of playing with your filters. Um, I've never really played with them, but I've just gone through them on the previous models, see what they do. And then you have your, uh, your video mode. So turning the dial, you can get to all those. And the dial can be locked. Classic of the XT range and of course the XH1. Then the other thing that you will see on the top is what we also have on uh, the XH1, which is the LCD. And this LCD actually helps you when you arm, um, uh, when your camera is off, even when it's on. So when it's off, like now, I can see my battery is left with three bars out of the five. And if I had the SD card here, it would show that uh, for video and photos, I'm left with how many photos to shoot according to um, the, the settings that I did before I switch it on. And I'm going to see how much time I'm left on the video side. So that is a very welcome. Um, this is not really an addition, but an inclusion that came from XH1. Then, at the front, I wanted to talk about this button right here. Um, normally on your XT range, this would be your uh, MCS or is it MSC, where you get your autofocus or your focus mode, your manual, your continuous, and your single um, point. Now it's a button when you press it, then at the back on the, on, uh, on the monitor, you're going to scroll to get to the one that you want, the desired one. So for me, this could be welcome and I'm going to really test this. It could be welcome, it might not. Um, because sometimes when I wanted to move to, let's say, manual mode, 
uh, because the person is not moving of, of uh, acquired focus, I would love to just press a button than the dial that we had uh, because when I press the dial, especially when it's on a gimbal, it's a bit of an issue. Uh, with a button, it can be easier, or even when it's handheld, um, it's easy to shake when you, when I turn the dial. Because that dial was not, you know, that smooth. It was made like that so that it doesn't, by mistake, move to where you, you didn't want it to go. So that is something that has changed, and you'll see at the top here, we actually <clears throat> do have a record button so if you are on a manual mode on photos and you quickly want to snap a video you just press that and it's going to go on to the video mode and shoot the video without changing anything else at the top also Fujifilm has included your ISO button um, for me uh, I definitely would love to change this simply because your your lenses from Fujifilm, they have a ring where you have an aperture. So, aperture. so you can control it there. And since well, we have the front and the back dial, I can use one for your shutter and then I can use one for the ISO. So this button, you can assign it to something new and that's what I would love to do. So you also have your extra button at the back, um, top back which I can change it to anything else, or you can change it to anything else. At the back, nothing really much has changed ex except moving the buttons around and the toggle switch has been changed um, a bit. The one thing that I welcome here is this monitor. Not that it's articulating. I am not really a fan of an articulating monitor, even though it can help you at times, especially when you're vlogging, when you need to see yourself. Uh, but for, m for my purposes, especially on a gimbal, I like the tilting one. But what I like about this is that previously, when you would open your HDMI door or cap and you put your HDMI, when you turn this, it will hit your HDMI cable. That has been changed. So your HDMI, which you want it to be here all the time if you are using the monitor, and your mic, the LCD doesn't hit it. It actually would hit your headset. So you can monitor with the headset, and if you have to move this, taking out the headset won't really hurt, um, rather than when uh, it is the mic because you want it all there if it's the hdmi you want it all there and the thing with also the mic if you have put your hdmi uh, monitor here you will be able to put your your not your mic you'll be able to put your headset on the monitor so it shouldn't be much of a hassle so the one other thing that i like which is a nice inclusion here is that all your all your cables will be from one side. That for me, it's a plus. And here at the bottom is your USB-C for charging. This is actually quite nice that you can record while charging and it actually charges a lot faster when you're using a PD power bank. I have seen from zero to about three or four bars out of the five bars, it actually accelerates the charging. So I'm not sure if the charging technology on the camera has changed, but that's what I have seen. Um, what else can we talk about here? Oh, of course. If you're actually owning your X-T4, then you don't have to buy new batteries. This is the same batteries from the, X, uh, the X-T4. So this is quite nice. Um, a bigger battery would be a nice welcome, but the X-T4 battery is way much better than um, your X-T3 batteries and I think also your X-H1 batteries. So guys, um, this is very exciting that I had the opportunity to test this camera as it landed on the South African ground. And I think for now, that's all. I'm going to link a video up here once I have um, uploaded the video where I tested this camera on a wedding, 30 degrees Celsius in South Africa, 48% humidity. Um, I don't think I have anything to add from here. So, see you on the next video.